sure you feel about the Big 12 adding four teams, and I'm going to assume most people are fine with at least three of them. Uh, <laughs> We know. I think everyone's okay that Colorado came in. <laughs> there you go, Coach Prime, part of the uh, part of the Big Twelve. But it it obviously lends itself to wondering how things are going to play out and what it means for BYU football in this new look Big Twelve conference. So with Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah replacing Texas and Oklahoma. How does that change your expectations for BYU football in the Big 12 moving forward? Well, this group of 16, right? Uh, there's only so many bowl games. Last year, I think nine, eight, eight, maybe nine teams from the Big 12 went into the bowl season. Now they're adding four more teams to fight over the same kind of slot. So, so for teams trying to get bowl eligible, it makes it tougher. Yeah. Uh, there, there are more teams fighting for less. Um, but at the same time, there's some winnable games with those teams coming in, whereas Oklahoma and Texas have been very difficult for teams to defeat. Uh, BYU went 0-2 against them this last year. But they get Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado. These new guys, does that, does, can BYU beat all four of those teams? Absolutely they can. Do they, do they expect to? Yes. Um, but they could also get beat by all four. That's the beauty of this league. But I think there's more opportunities for success with these four coming in. Uh, but less opportunity to go get some things because um, the, the, it's a supply and demand thing. Yeah. Now we got we got a big group of teams fighting for the same stuff. I, I guess if the, with the question being how does it change your expectations, I think my answer is it, it doesn't change my expectations. Yeah, the teams change, and yeah, you're adding two more to the mix. But what I expect out of BYU and what I hope for BYU doesn't change regardless of who the teams are. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're losing some massive programs when it comes to college football in Texas and Oklahoma, and you're certainly not adding anybody in terms of brand or history that, that compare to anything that those teams have done, or at least the perception of those teams' big picture throughout college football. But it doesn't change my opinion of what I want for BYU. I, I still want B. It's still going to boil down for BYU. What where do they land on the quarterback? Yep. How how much better can the offensive line be? If those two things get solidified, I have the utmost confidence that the defense is going to take a step forward. I love what we saw last year based off of the previous season, the steps they took f forward last year. I expect them to take another step forward, so I feel good about the defensive side with Jay Hill in, in charge. If, if the quarterback situation and the offensive line can get resolved, I love the skill players around it. So I, I, I think BYU will be in good shape regardless of who the other teams are. I like BYU going to Salt Lake more than going to Norman. You know, they went to Austin last year, yeah. and we, we saw how that played out. Um, I, I think they're, I love seeing Arizona and Arizona State on the BYU schedule. I love that Arizona's coming up here this year, and Arizona State's in a major rebuild. And you know what? November in Tempe is a good place to, to <laughs> be for the football team, and I love that. So as you look at the schedule, and you don't see Colorado on there. BYU's not playing Colorado this year. But the three that have added, I think, make that a better schedule for BYU mm -hmm. Um, not necessarily in general because you want to see when you see Oklahoma and Texas on there you're like okay the storm's coming at circle these dates just like we did last year uh, losing them hurts but but the four teams coming in I think enhance BYU's expectations well the other part about this is we've heard for years and, and college athletics in general have been trending this way for a long time is that we're, we're losing the 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 region aspect that the the teams that are nearby and that regional feel, we're losing, well, now those in the Big 12 kind of have the best of both worlds because the ability to have some of these teams in your conference that are closer will cut down on some of the travel. You do have more of a history. Certainly BYU and Utah have a history, but you know, you're going to probably be a little bit more familiar with Arizona and Arizona State because they're out this direction. You've probably paid more attention to them. I think that that somewhat helps. Now, in terms of changing expectation, that has nothing to do with that, but I, I think the overall feel of the conference will sort of, like I said, be the best of both worlds where you're in a P5 conference and you have some of these other teams, but yet you can keep some of that regionality mm -hmm. of, of having some of these lo local t 
closer teams, not local, to be able to play. Look, I called a baseball game in the Big 12 in West Virginia, BYU West Virginia. <laughs> I was surprised we were on the same continent by the time we got there, <laughs> let alone the same league. So there are some outliers. But hopefully the schedule makers will, will go, hey, you know what, West Virginia, you don't need to spend all your time out west. Right. And, and the same thing, BYU, Utah, you don't need to go to Morgantown so much. Maybe you guys can meet in a championship game if you're good enough. Um, but, yeah, I love the regional thing. That's why I, I thought, you know, Colorado's been down for so long, but now their basketball team's in the big dance. Dion has got their football team with optimism. Uh, the Utes have been good. Arizona is now better than they've been in football. Arizona State is worse than they've been over the course. So you bring in a mix. Yeah. You bring in a mix of teams you can beat. Well, the, the other part about this is the Big 12, as we've seen over the last couple of years, there's, there's different teams have risen to the top in different years. It's not crazy for somebody that was in the middle of the pack or even down towards the bottom to have that one year where they jump up because we've seen it happen a couple right. of times. Whether it's winning the regular season title or winning the Big 12 championship, it, the, the winning and winning at the top has sort of been spread around a little bit. And so it does give teams optimism that, hey, why can't we be that team? You know, nothing replaces those two. You mentioned a moment ago, Texas and Oklahoma. That's why the SEC's got them, right? Uh, because they, they are what they are. They are what BYU was to the WAC in the Mountain West, the biggest game for everybody. doesn't matter which sport. If it was BYU, it was a big deal. Um, in the Big 12, and BYU just had one taste of it. If it's Texas playing anybody, it's anybody's biggest game, and Oklahoma as well. Um, and and that's, that's the cachet that those two sure. have. Um, and, and BYU's had that cachet before, uh, and, and now they're trying to find their way in this giant big league, as is everybody else. But that got us thinking. So there's all these sports, and, and if you lose Texas and Oklahoma and you add these four, are you stronger or are you weaker? And, you know, some are good arguments and some are no-brainers. We thought, hey, it's Friday. Let's, let's go. Let's have our little quiz here. <laughs> yeah. You ready? Let's go. Okay. Right, what are we going to start with? Let's start with football since we've been talking about football. Um, is the Big 12 stronger or weaker having lost those two and gained those four? Um, this one was a tough one because from a, from a brand standpoint, Big 12 is weaker. When you lose your two anchor programs and your biggest high-profile programs in football, it, it's hard to say that you are stronger. But from, from a, maybe an overall talent perspective and top to bottom, you're adding two teams. I, at the end of the day, I ended up going weaker. And I, I also want to say that when we say weaker, it doesn't mean that means they're weak. It just means from where they were before, are they as strong? And I, I can't. Yeah. What I, Texas and Oklahoma yes. bring as opposed to what the four I, I just I, I landed on weaker. And you can't lose two teams like Texas and Oklahoma and, and say you're better. Despite what, you know, despite the talent that is coming in, I, I just can't say that you're stronger. I'm going weaker. You saw the graphic a moment ago, what the street cred that Texas and Oklahoma bring. Um, is off the charts. They are the Big 12. They were the, the Big 8. They, were, they are the Big 12. And now the Big 12's got to re-identify itself. Um, and so uh, it, the national street cred, you can't, you can't just say, okay, you're assigned that. It's like telling Colorado and Utah, you're rivals now. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Wait, they're not? It happens just over history and time. So football is weaker because of those two leaving, despite the four coming in, uh, based on national prominence, the footprint, the mystique, the history of success, and the fact that uh, as you look around the Big 12, there's nobody that's everybody's biggest game now. Yeah. All right, so what about, what about basketball? We'll go with men's basketball. Stronger or weaker with the additions and subtractions to the SEC? I'm going stronger on that because of Arizona. And Colorado's gotten a little better. We'll see if they can sustain that. Uh, Utah's got a good coach. We'll see where they go. And Arizona State, um, they're... they're they're kind of all over the place, but, but they at least have a history of being competitive. Uh, but you look at Houston, Kansas, and Arizona in the same conference. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's bad news for everyone yes. else. Uh, Texas has been hot and cold in basketball. Oklahoma has been the same. But 
but Arizona trumps those two as a basketball power. Arizona carries the weight of these four newcomers, yeah. I think, in making the basketball league better. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's stronger, and adding Arizona is the key. Look, there's a reason why Brett Yormark reportedly was perfectly fine to just add Arizona and then maybe go after UConn. By the way, can you imagine if that's the way this played out? I don't want to imagine that. From a basketball that. standpoint? I don't need that. We're, to, we we're talking about the sleep. team that's likely going to win the national championship, yeah. possibly coming into the, to this conference. I mean, obviously it didn't happen, but who knows what's down the road. But, yeah, adding Arizona is, is what is the key here. And like you said, Colorado was an NCAA tournament team last year. That's, they, they, they took a step forward in that program. Losing Texas specifically based off of last year hurts, but the overall add, in my opinion, makes the league stronger. All right, women's basketball. You lose Texas, yeah. you lose Oklahoma, you gain the other four. Are you stronger or are you weaker? I, I'm going to say weaker. Um, Texas and Oklahoma were both very, very good, and Texas specifically, I, I'll tell you, I, I was so impressed with what I, I got to see that team up close right. in Austin, and I, they were excellent. So losing both of those is a blow for sure. U of A last year was just two games above 500. ASU was not good at all last year. Colorado was a sweet 16 team. So like the men's program, the women's program was, was good. Um, Utah loses Peely. So I really don't know how good they're going to be next year. So to me, the additions don't make up for the subtractions on this one. Yeah, I'm going weaker. You lose Texas national footprint, Elite Eight this year. They're always good. And, uh, and, and they're the sure thing. You lose those, you, you're, you're weaker. All right, what about women's soccer? We obviously know how good BYU is in women's soccer. And this was a really good women's soccer league this year. Do you think they're stronger or weaker? I think the league is weaker because Texas is gone. Uh, BYU beat Texas in Austin. These are the top teams. And then Texas beat BYU in the championship game yeah. uh, for the Big 12 tournament. Uh, Texas is, you know, hey. Texas. They're Texas. You lose them, and you pick up these other four soccer schools, uh, you're better with Oklahoma and Texas in the soccer league. Yeah, Colorado is the best of the four coming in, but losing Texas is a big deal. Uh, the Buffalo is not enough to make up for the loss of Longhorn. So, yeah, Baseball. I'm going to go weaker. Baseball, stronger or weaker? I'm going stronger. Um, and this is simple math for me. Adding three good baseball teams, because remember, Colorado does not play baseball. Right. So adding three is better than losing two. So you're, you're getting one more good team than what you had before. So, look, most may think that, that only about Texas here, but Oklahoma's first in the standings right now. Yeah. They're, they're number one in the Big 12 standings. Still, I think, though, the additions make the conference an overall better baseball league, and it's a very good baseball league. I'm calling it a push because of the, all those reasons. I don't know if they're better uh, stronger or weaker because you add two warm weather schools and traditionally they bring good baseball because they can play year round and that's the Arizona schools uh, and, and then you lose Oklahoma who again you don't think of baseball when you think Oklahoma but you, they are in first place <laughs> first. Uh, and Texas there too that that's a tough one I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see that, that TCU might just be the happiest team of them all just to go all right we're going to dominate everybody but TCU is having an off season so far yeah uh, and they were picked to win the league all right what about softball Softball, I'm going to say weaker. Oklahoma's been the toughest program in the country for the last 10 years. They're number one right now. Texas right behind them. No replacing those two, which is good for BYU, Oklahoma State, which has finished third behind those two the last few years, and everybody else. Yeah, weaker. Oklahoma is, is dominant this year, and they've been dominant for a long, long time. Losing that program is a big deal. All right, women's women's volleyball schedule just came out. Yeah, is and it and the Texas and Oklahoma aren't on it for the first time in forever <laughs> for a Big 12 schedule. Uh, stronger or weaker? I, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say weaker. You can't lose the national champions and say that you're stronger without them. I'm gonna agree. And Arizona State in that group eliminated BYU in the NCAA tournament this last year, so the Sun Devils are legit as well. Utah's gotten better um, despite those four coming in. Uh, Texas. Texas is the king. They're the national champs. Yeah. All right. Uh, track and field, cross country. Weaker, stronger? Weaker. Texas is a major player. The women are number four. The men are number seven. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, it, it, weaker. No brainer. Yeah. On that. Gymnastics, stronger or weaker? I'm going to say weaker, although I will say adding Utah certainly helps. We know how good the Red Rocks are, but both the Sooners and Longhorns are legit. Again, I'll kind of go back to the simple math. Adding the really good Utah still doesn't make up for losing the two really good Sooners and Longhorns. Oklahoma's number one, the number one most of the year in gymnastics. I thought they just ran the option, the wishbone <laughs> back there. They do, they do more things. Uh, 
I, I love the additions, but the Big 12 belong to Texas and Oklahoma. So there is an identity yeah. rebuild underway. So we've gone for most of these weaker. Are you surprised that that's the way this plan? Because I, I don't know if I felt that way going into this. I think it's, I think it's a tribute to Texas and yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. It's, again, it's been their league. So now they're leaving, and everyone kind of gets to move in. What the Big 12 did do to make itself stronger by bringing in those four is it eliminated the Pac-12 from the food chain. Right. And now there's just four P5s, and, uh, and, and, and that's good for the four. That's not good for the one that has been eliminated. Yeah. But you bring those four in, and you strengthened your league because you have one less P5 to deal with. 